Oh, 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 everybody. I like oh, that song. I like that music. <laughs> rock, yeah, rock, that was good. Rock out there. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Ranger Rob Country Living Podcast. Um, it's, uh, let's see, this is episode 70. Can you believe it? Woo! And uh, anyway, uh, we'll get everybody introduced in a minute here. Our, Rob, is that you? <laughs> what happened? Oh, that's my truck. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 that's my that's my everything's okay alarm. Yeah, he's uh he's our Lone Ranger uh, this week. So uh, today we're going to talk about prepping for spring, and what I mean by that isn't like prepping, but getting ready. All of us, uh, uh, almost everything I'm hearing from everybody is things that are going on, uh, getting ready for spring, and all the things and and endeavors that we're doing this uh, this summer, basically, but. So the theme is kind of like asking you guys what you're working on uh, for getting ready for spring and in uh, in summer, of course. And uh, so that's kind of the, the the gist of the title. Um, the other thing I want to make sure is introduce everybody. We got, of course, on the top, right in the middle, we have uh, 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 <laughs> Lone Ranger making noise. <laughs> we got JD Pig Hobby, Hobby Farm. And then we got Rev over there, uh, or better known as Lone Ranger. I don't know what, where's your mask, man. Um, <laughs> we get a mask man, mandate on this show. I'll so work got, on it. I'll work on it. And uh, of course, he's over in, in North Carolina. And then we got John Pearson down below there with a bright hat. Yeah. Uh, what is it? What's on your hat? Oh, Builders Electric. That's uh, our, that's our company hat. It's uh, a little high viz. A little green. bit of a little bit of flair. Yeah, a lot of flair there. Uh, we got a special video of uh, of uh, John here in a minute, and uh, he's over in uh, Western Oregon, over near Eugene, right? That's correct. Yep. And then last but not least, we have Amy from Dragonfly Farms. She's got a pretty oh. pink hat on, and uh, uh, I haven't talked to you about some of your projects going on, so you have to really inform us about all the kind of things going on. Uh, over there in a uh, dragonfly. So anyway, I got to get caught up on the world. I uh, also wanted to remind everybody that we are a podcast and there's an audio form of this uh, uh, show. And if you uh, listen to podcasts on your cell phone or however you listen to it, normally the software that you use uh, searches all the main platforms out there and just type in Ranger Rob Country Living Podcast and it should be easily found. Put us in your favorites so you can listen to any of our 70 episodes that we've done in the, uh, from the past. So we've been going doing this for about a year and a half now. So, And last but not least, to let you know, some people enjoy using Rumble and also uh, uh, Twitch. We are on both of those platforms playing live as we speak. So. Um, Shout out. <laughs> I, hey, you know Dang. what? That's not even on my notes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and don't forget your glasses. <laughs> oh, you guys are off. <laughs> <laughs> right. oh, right. I'm getting my glasses. So, but uh, before we do shout out, scared me to say it. I want to share <laughs> graphics. Uh, <laughs> I do have some graphics. Um, I want to show you a very uh, nice design of a chicken tractor, and it's being. Uh, did you build this from scratch, John? Yeah, John Pearson built this. So let's, let's. Yeah, you um, did a good job. Well, yeah. thank you. Here's your video. Okay, that is. It's pretty fancy. <laughs> is that the grandkids in the background? They are. That is, they are, they were playing <laughs> in the background there. So That's you're on. You, so this is your design for your new meat birds this year, right? Yeah, you know, I've seen the, um, I've seen <clears throat> the, the, the design somewhat, not the the wheel portion of it, but the, uh, the overall design. It's an eight by eight. You know, you cover two thirds with uh, metal, give them some shade, and and all that kind of stuff. It opens up, got all the hinges and all that, all that kind of stuff, but. Uh, 
I kept thinking, I kept watching and watching and watching, trying to find a, a wheel design, and I just kept drawing it out until uh, finally, the if you watch that, the as I, as I pull that thing forward, the the back of the tractor raises up about two and a half inches onto the wheels, so it works it works out pretty good. I was just I couldn't help but the side pre um, preview of you is like uh, I can see why you need a you know uh, all this simplicity because you must get really tuckered out. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Really, what does that mean? <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Ouch! Stay back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that design. That design is more designed for me because it's like this stuff is <laughs> killing me this year. Um, it was a big so, breakfast. Oh, I tell you, it's like <laughs> this year. I've had to haul so because of our wow. lovely weather. I've had to haul five gallon buckets a lot, and it's like I keep getting up in the morning and going, "What did I do?" <laughs> and I'm realizing it's handling all the five gallon buckets of water. Um, I don't have to carry them very far, but it's, um, I'm feeling it this year <laughs> pretty bad. But we've had a lot of bad days. I, I have no water out in the pig. So, yeah, um, I did forget to turn on my comments. Hi, Jack. He's here. Um, but anyway, Hi, yeah, Jack. so um, you got 25 meat birds. Have they come in yet? No, they're coming in in about two weeks. Okay. And I, you're doing yeah, what kind of game? Like, what's that? What kind of birds are you doing? Uh, the Cornish cross. Cornish cross. So you'll have the waddlers. <laughs> yeah. So I hope actually it would be really neat if you would take some videos once in a while as they're growing up. And oh, then yeah. I'll try to do it with our uh, rain, uh, Red Rangers and compare the difference between the two. Yeah. Uh, it should be kind of interesting. Um, I'll tell you one thing. Our house Red Rangers, I've noticed, really is... I have never seen chicks eat so much food. And I mean, they can devour food. Oh my God. Yeah, they do. Um, yeah. So, yeah, um, Red Rangers and Cornish Crosses is the same way. I hear their yeah. eating machines. So, yeah, that's what I hear. So, <laughs> so there is one thing I want to bring up in here, and I'm kind of addressing um, all the homesteaders and, and people. Uh, selling eggs and all that stuff, uh, not only on Cricket River Ranch, but all above. And it's in uh, this year, if you guys haven't noticed, there's been inflation. And oh, if you guys haven't noticed. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, feed is costing more. <laughs> and all that. And Say what yet, now? I, yet I am still seeing people selling eggs for three fifty a dozen or something like that. And say, so, guys, that maybe made sense last year or year before. But, you know, uh, it's okay that we all bring up our prices to a, a, a better price, like 4 or $5 a, a, um, a dozen for eggs. Not because we're trying to be cruel to anybody. It's just you're selling your eggs for uh, – you're losing money. Um, and yeah. It's bad enough at three fifty a dozen. But, um, guys, bring your prices up. Um, well, the thing of it is, too, is, is eggs are, you know – Go buy a, a dozen of, of store eggs and buy a dozen of farm fresh eggs. Not only the the money in the is it worth it, in, you know, and you, you pay a lot more in feed, but you, you quality has a cost. Yeah, yeah, and this is I just I don't know why there's a handful of folks that, out there that always feel like they need to undercut you. So, and and the other thing I'm going to bring up is. Uh, it, it embarrasses me a little bit, but it's necessary. Is I uh, uh, I have some people nearby us that are selling Idaho pasture pigs for whole size, uh, whole size, and yet they're selling them at four dollars a pound. Uh, and it's like, and what's um, their name? <laughs> well, I don't want to do don't that. Do uh, that. Yeah, don't no. do that. No, I'm kidding. No, um, I'm kidding. Egg but, their house. <laughs> egg their house, Rob. That's what I say. <laughs> you have all these extra eggs, I can't sell at five dollars. Yeah. Um, Chuck them. It, it no, costs the, too the much point to egg is, the point these is eggs. you're not you're hurting <laughs> other farmers when you undercut each other. Yeah. Um, uh, a lot of us who are in it, we're definitely crunching the numbers and we're trying to make sure that we're making either covering the cost or we are making a little bit of money because you don't go in business for no reason, you know, not to make money. So, um, so uh, I feel embarrassed because I sell my, my pigs at five twenty-five a pound. 
Um, but I, I also. But isn't don't... that? I can't remember. I know we talked about this. Uh huh. But isn't that USDA that you're selling at that price? Oh, that's that's with uh, um, when I do the store. But I'm just talking about custom cuts, which are just when you take your pig and they come pick, uh, they butcher it on your property. They take it to um, like Cinder Butte is what we use around here. And they are not a USDA. They're a custom cut, which is nothing wrong with the quality or anything. It's just not USDA, you know, USD inspected. So um, is there a price difference? A, l- a little bit. Not, not too bad. Um, but you would like think. I, when I sell whole or halves of, of, of pigs, um, um, we, uh, we use custom cut. And uh, when we, so we sell the pig um, for what it costs us to raise it. So how we calculate it is uh, we take the hanging weight of, um, of the pig after it's been uh, <laughs> cleaned out, let's say, and headless. That weight, we uh, the uh, formula is five twenty five a pound against that, and uh, so. But what I found is I have we have folks in here who are doing it four dollars hanging weight, which is there's there I unless they're not using very good feed um, or a lot of scraps or whatever. Um, we use I keep the highest quality right now. I'm I'm running my pigs at hog nineteen, which is the highest level. Of, uh, protein at, at the store I use. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, we're looking at $16 a bag for that. And that's a 40 pound bag. Uh, we go through almost 70 pounds of yeah. uh, pig feed a day. And so, um, so you're going to be easily 800 to a thousand dollars into a pig. If you're using really high quality feed and you're not giving them scraps and stuff like that. Um, so I, what I'm just pointing out is is guys is uh, yeah I'd love to undercut everybody in my area and stuff like that and get all the sales but really is you know, business sense is saying you, you you're hurting yourself and you're hurting your fellow homesteads or farms so all I ask is guys is to think about we'll support you at your prices when you're in the market range of everybody else but if if you're trying to undercut and stuff. I actually feel sorry for you a little bit. I feel, yeah. I, um, but at the same time, there's a lot of, um, like there's other people selling meat like we are in Central Oregon grown in Central Oregon. I will not be undercutting those people. Uh, they've worked hard to build their ranches. they built hard to get their uh, systems down and whatever. And when, uh, whatever they're charging is making, you know, it, it's, it's a business and it's got to make money. So uh, uh, we're n- we would certainly not be undercutting anybody. I'm just asking people to think about that. I'm not mad. I mean, I understand the human nature of doing that. But uh, uh, really, uh, when you have the opportunity in the future to maybe consider the fact that maybe you should be more in the market, believe me, people will be happy to buy your stuff at, re- at, those, at those higher rates and it will only help your pocketbook and your f- – what you're trying to accomplish, which is pay for your pigs. So anyway, um, uh, I just see that a lot with eggs and I see that a lot with pork and other things too. So um, yeah. people don't bring it up and talk about it. Uh, it will never get better. So uh, there's no hatred or anything like that for people that do that. Um, but maybe those people that do that have never heard from the other side of the house <laughs> saying being under, you know, other companies or other farms or other ranches are being affected by people doing that to, uh, to the market. So, and I'm sure selling things really cheap from a greenhouse or whether you're growing uh, vegetables and stuff, we're hurting the farmers markets and stuff. If we don't keep our prices up. Um, So anyway, I I just hope that's a considerate way of asking people to think about that in the future. Um, And uh, uh, not, and I understand why people do it and stuff, but anyway, just the big picture. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Anybody else have any comments in that area? Yeah, yeah go buy up shoot up all their pork at four dollars a pound and sell it for five twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> buy them out. 
yeah. I mean, it, it'd be like me, uh, you know, maybe if I'm, uh, you know, get a cow in the future and I start milking or something, and I start selling at four dollars a uh, a quart, uh, half gallon or something, I'd be hurting Amy. For, and you know, it's like, um, anyway. So all of us have things that we do. And it's really important to understand. I always check with you guys, like, what are you guys selling your stuff for? And I check and I say, this is what I want to sell mine for. Is that a reasonable thing or am I overlooking at something or whatever? So anyway, uh, I wish more podcasts, more uh, homesteaders would talk about this and say, you know, let's good try point. to be consistent. So that, That's a real good point. Yeah. You know, Amy, did you have a comment? I do. And it's probably the libertarian in me coming out. So gave the warning. <laughs> what I like about um, homesteading is the community aspect of it. Yeah. And when I think about, you know, the eggs prices or milk or pork or vegetable starts, you know, when you're pricing your stuff out, I think what, what most people take into consideration when they're, picking a price is what it costs them to do. So if you don't have as many cows or as many pigs, then it's not going to cost you as much. So you don't have to make as much money, but I like, I, I'm on the flip side of the coin here with you. Uh, I like that this is a free market economy and, and that not everybody does it for the money. So I disagree with you. I think we should let people price it however they want to. And that, but the, the if, biggest if part else, they're the gonna biggest, end up losing money because of what they're well, doing. But that's but the but the biggest I mean, part like of this us, we don't actually charge hardly anything for ours. But then again, we yeah. only sell the family. <laughs> that right, we're you're in selling the, the family the community, and if people can't afford stuff in the store right now, how are they gonna afford it if it's over what the store price is. Yeah. And and there's some products that come off a farm that you can't beat the store prices. I, I remember us having that conversation about this time last year when I did raise my egg prices, but feed prices had also just gone up. Yeah. So, so I don't think we can, I don't know. I think it comes down to um, knowing where your food comes from. And, and I like that everybody can make their own choice and and I don't think outpricing somebody is uh spiteful I, um, actually I don't think you know, it, I wasn't I libertarian I'm not before looking I married at it, one. I'm not looking at a spitefulness I think it's just people that um don't realize the big picture sometimes when they're when they're doing that uh there's a lot of people like on the ranch on here that sell eggs and they've been real consistent of doing four to five dollars uh um a dozen, and then all of a sudden, out of the blue, somebody would say, "Hey, I, three fifty, You know, and are they doing that to try to get the business away from those people, or are they just overran with eggs, or whatever? But just understand that there is an impact, and it does affect people um, one way or another. And that's all I want to do is bring up the awareness of what what we're doing from our actions. So, um, so anyway, uh, uh, but. Now that, you know, I guess I, I should be, become liberal. I'll just undercut everybody. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Um, if you can afford to. I can't. <laughs> so, uh, and, but, um, but I, um, I don't know. I just, uh, I, I, I don't know if I'm not wording it right or something. It's not a, a spitefulness. I think it's just awareness of people just don't think about the impact that they may have against other ranches or other homesteads or, or um, they just don't know what other people are charging. Right. Yeah. And that's, it's always, that's it's, just, it. it's not that they're doing it to undermine anybody. They just yeah. probably doesn't, don't know what other people's game plan is. Yeah. True. Um, yeah. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to bring that, uh, bring that up. Uh, I know it was sensitive, but I really, I don't hear homesteaders talk about that a lot and stuff. Um, and I'd love to hear more homesteaders, of, especially ones that may be selling online or selling uh, a lot of their stuff. Um, uh, we should get, you know, well, like Morgan. I'm sure you'd have a say about what, because he sells online. He sells 
goose eggs and, and stuff like that and all that. I'd love to hear his opinion on that. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, and I'm just oh, a little yeah. guy. <laughs> I figured it out last year. I was coming out to about 1500 per pig is how much yeah. it costs to raise a pig all after, the way through. That was after the raise and feed. Yep. Yeah. And, and you're not allowed to count your time either or, you know, what, yeah. what your, uh, you know, your input is. That's, I mean, that's just dollars. Right. And, yeah. 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 Oh, interesting. Well, before I forget, uh, I don't, I don't have one, but I'm gonna. Um, I need Reb to yell out graphics. Graphics. <laughs> it's time for Ranger Rob shout outs. Yes, this is the time we want to recognize businesses, websites, and services. Here's today's spotlights. Hey, graphics. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't have a. I don't. I don't think I have. A, um, I know, did you well you got uh let's start with Debbie and them. Do you guys have any shout outs? Yeah, yeah. We, we got I'm Wild not, Kingdom. I was gonna do it, dig it. <laughs> we got Wild Kingdom outside our house right now. We have <laughs> squirrels, rabbits, <laughs> everything just flying through. Yeah, they're all coming out of underneath the shop. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because you're floating. <laughs> shout out to the wildlife, they know spring is coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. How about you, Rev? You got a yeah. shout out? Uh, not really. Uh, <laughs> let's make one up. Shout out to all the homesteaders out there that can't homestead yet. That are still trying to get to the point that we are. It, it you know, it takes a lot to get here, and don't give up. I say, you know, even if you're oh, laying, living in an apartment <laughs> somewhere, you know, yep. keep a chicken in your closet. Keep two chickens <laughs> in your closet, <laughs> and grow lettuce on your wall. Do what you got to do. Keep trying, and you'll get there eventually. Yep, that's all. Uh, that's the best thing I come up with on the spot. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's good good point. point. How about Mr. Pearson? You got anything? Um, let's see. A couple things. Uh, oops, hang on one minute here. My uh, Ranger Rob was coming on my other phone. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, I was just gonna. Past. I was just gonna uh, do a quick shout out to uh, you know and I. I think about all these different places and everything. And it's like, Hey, you know what? Free plug. I'm here. Um, I love where I work and uh, I'm going to give a shout out to builders electric builders. Electric is Eugene's premier electrical contractor. And cool. uh, I'm their signing supervisor over there and uh, great outfit. Um, and uh, if you, if you uh, call that place um, at any time, 24 hours a day, you will never, get an answering machine or an answering uh or or a recording they always have a somebody there to take your call that's a feed in itself <laughs> yeah no kidding oh and also i wanted to give a shout out to my bees who had the opportunity to sting me more than twice uh <laughs> but they only stung me twice uh the other day when i was uh going out checking on the uh the uh, livelihood of my bees so Did you have any protection on I did, but you know what? Um, unfortunately, it was the end of the day, and uh, I had had a cocktail. <laughs> and, uh, don't that's put your bee suit on. Bees. That, that's that's that's. Uh, don't put your bee suit on after you've had a cocktail. You miss spots and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> you end up getting them coming in this way, and then you got to smack yourself in the forehead. To get rid of it, uh, but no. I want I, a uh, video got, of that, John. Uh, <laughs> you know, I want a video of that. Well, I tell you what, I'll 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 take a video of it the next time I go out and see my bees. I thought, you know what, it's winter time. They're they're got to be docile. It's uh, you know, I don't need any smoke or anything like that. I'm just gonna pop the top and give them some you know, nice you know sugar water with some nutrients in it and stuff. And I popped the top, and boy, they came alive. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I woke them up from their nap. So they had the opportunity to sting me more than twice, but they only got me twice. Anything else? Nope, that's it for me. Okay. Amy, you got any, you got any shout outs today? I want to I wanna, wanna copy off uh, John and Debbie's theme here. Shout out to my tulips that are giving me hope. <laughs> Spring is coming because I see them popping up. The tulips, the hyacinths, the bulbs. Boy, it doesn't it doesn't feel like spring is coming, but I I saw them poking their heads out the other day. 
So I mind said, okay, you, I'll try. Mind <laughs> you. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna sneak away real quick. And watch this. I want you. I'm gonna move my phone for two seconds. I want to show you guys something. <laughs> You're not taking us to the bathroom, are you? Can you <laughs> take us to the beehive. Whoa, um, green, green. I got green and, green and sunshine out there. Green oh, and sunshine. It was a beautiful day. I am so jelly right now. I want green so bad. Oh, it's <laughs> oh, today was a short yeah. sleeve day. It was we awesome. We do have one more shout out, and that's to the water company that or the plumbing company that came and fixed our uh piping yesterday. Sweeney Plumbing in Sisters. Nice. nice. And, and they wasted no time in getting out here, getting it done. It was great. It was painful finding a person to come out. Yeah. yeah Everybody they kept jumped saying right on it. Friday, Monday. And they, these guys said, oh, we'll have somebody there this afternoon. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. You know, I, I kind of want to, I kind of like the comment about, um, um, People are trying, uh, Rev's uh, comment about trying to get people into, uh, they want to get into homesteading. And, and and yes, it's very frustrating. I imagine you could be in your 20s or 30s. You maybe have young kids. You're trying to get your uh, careers up. You don't know whether you should stay in the city, but yet you want to do uh, things, consider homeschooling, or maybe you want to consider growing more foods and stuff. And, and the biggest thing I I, especially when it comes to hydroponics, I always want to bring this up is we try real hard to let you know that we kind of try to talk about doing what we do in a small scale. So, um, uh, because if you go back in our videos and you see back in our Arizona days, you can see that we did a lot of above ground gardening down there and stuff. And we just had a typical lot, uh, home type thing. And, and we did what we could or did the best we can with what we had. And so um, I always want to make sure in this show that we can we know that people have goals of trying to get in some form of homesteading or we want to be self-sustainable. Uh, Yet, you know, there's so many things and factors with that, with uh, jobs and kids and schools and et cetera. Um, so uh, a big shout out to those people that are trying their best from where they're you know, where they're located, make do with what you have already. And if your ultimate goal is to do what we're doing, um, it will come. Um, I didn't think I was going to get back on a five-acre place again. I thought I was done with all that. And before you know it, an opportunity came along. And and uh, so you just never know what's going to happen. So we, uh, and of course, everybody's scared to do anything with real estate right now because we don't know if it's going to crash and burn or not, but there's also advantages to when it crash and burns, that might be the time to dive in. So anyway, we, we think about you guys um, for whether you have a homestead or not. Um, we're all just here to show you ways of growing food or having animals. Uh, every kind of animal I talk about with pork and things like that, uh, you can, you can get quantities of pork, fresh pork. You can buy pork from a farmer, uh, even if you don't live in, uh, have property to do that kind of stuff. So, um, in fact, in some cases, probably makes more sense to buy directly from a farmer and buy one of their pigs um, at, um, uh, or their uh, also beef and uh, all these other kind of animals. Um that you can have butchered and have uh, buying quantity and put in your freezer and you can live in downtown Phoenix. Um, so uh, yeah, you just make do with what you got. And so we're, we're not, none of us, I don't think are saying, Hey guys, you need to get a homestead is like, is like no. our homesteads will show you some techniques and some of it you might be able to grow or you know, do on your own lot, whether you're in the city or just outside the city. So anyway, do your best, guys, and uh, we hope everybody can uh, get into starting to grow. And, and that may be the way of the future, because um, really what we're doing right now is sustainable. <laughs> so, it may be the necessity well, of the future. Yeah. Jack yeah. And even if out. you can't, even if you even if you can't do anything, just acquiring knowledge uh, about homesteading makes you feel like you're at least going in the right direction. Yep. You know what I mean? So you'll, you'll be ready when you get there, so to speak. You know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, if you're not doing anything that just, that just 
starts the chaos in your head. You know what I mean? And the anxiety, you know what I mean? If, if you're learning, at least you're going in the right direction. So if you can't do anything, at least watch all of Ranger Rob's videos, you know, there you go. <laughs> I like the road. This. I don't know if you guys, if you watch every video we do, you can see I've had a, a battle in my truck lately. on on, on rodents. Because I, 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 when I buy feed, I get feed and I throw it in the back of the truck. I don't really have a barn, so sometimes I leave the feed in the truck. Well, somehow a mouse discovered that there's feed in the back of my truck. So I, there was one mouse, and pretty soon there's two mice, and pretty soon uh, I got to a point of uh, uh, I've, I've caught over nine mice out of my back of my truck. They're not getting in the truck, but they're getting into the back of the truck. And so... Jack has probably noticed that I've been uh, having a um, mouse traps in the back of my truck, and I've actually been catching quite a few mice. And so, uh, yeah, well-fed mice. Uh, uh, in fact, when I catch them, they're fat. <laughs> so, anyway, um, so I know all of us. Uh, I know Debbie and John have had nightmares with with uh, yes. mice. I know. Uh, Amy's been fighting the, the rodents too. I haven't heard what you guys are in North Carolina. Um, is your your mice eating it's over crazy out here on the ranch? What's no, that? Um, oh, go ahead. I haven't had that many problems with them. Um, I have a, a little barn cat in my barn, and mm -hmm. uh, I got a little trap out there by the pig feed. But I I can I know that there that there's one or two there, but. I, not, not, you know, I'm going to call the National Guard over or anything like that just yet. You know what I mean? Uh, they haven't been too bad. Yeah, I over here in Eugene at, at my place, um, a couple of – when we first moved into this place, I got a – and you can Google it, um, and they have different ones all over the country, I think. But uh, if you Google, like, barn cat rescue um, – I had a, a company – a, a group come out, a nonprofit – they bring a couple of feral cats. I mean, these are not going to sit on your lap. They're not going to be your best friend. Um, you feed them for a few weeks. You let them go, and they hang around because you continue to feed them. And, they, um, and man, I tell you what, I, I have not seen a mouse in ages. Wow. That'd be nice. <laughs> I, got, I got two to three of them. They hang out, and then, then other ones start showing up, and uh, – walk out there in the area. I haven't seen a mouse in ages. Honestly, it's kind of crazy over here. I'm lucky. Knock on wood. <laughs> well, that's because we're feeding them so well He's over here in Central Oregon. I want a barn cat, too. Yeah. You need yeah. a barn yeah. truck. Or a truck cat. <laughs> that's what you need, Rob. A truck cat. <laughs> truck cat. Truck yeah, cats. Yeah. <laughs> Rob opens up the back and it's... <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, if he could take that bobcat and teach it to hunt mice in his truck, there you, you know, go. Then he'd yeah. be uh, uh, doing two things at once. There, you know, the whole purpose. We'll work on it. So, uh, uh, I think it's in the back of the I truck. think it's our recent video, or come, yeah, uh, we just got a uh, our uh, new chickens that we got from Debbie and John. Um, out to our fields so they can start um, integrating with my pigs now. And we get that new shutter door. Um, you know, a lot of these doors, they go either up or down or they go side to side. And when they do that, they take up space when they do that. And so on, and on the chicken shop we had, by the way, um, uh, the reason I just got to thinking about the bobcat, um, we're trying to make sure that we can – protect our chickens now from bobcats because we know we got them <laughs> so anyway this new shutter door uh your your uh chickens moved over to our place we put them in that for about three days and then we finally let them um uh, loose with the shutter door system and we checked on them while we walked out there at like nine o'clock at night when it was dark and the door was shut the chickens all made it back in um and they're doing everything just perfect so so far, uh, I think we've got them protected, and we can also do permaculture and not worry about sacrificing chickens to the bobcat and this they year. Will not, they will not take care of the mice for you. No, <laughs> but they, but I've taken care of the bobcat. That's kind of the the point. <laughs> yeah, because uh, 
they just watched those mice. They didn't even go after them where the front rocks would kill them. Yeah, I just, I, I, my biggest thing was I, I'd watch things like uh, Justin Rhodes and all those shows, and they've got permaculture chickens running around the fields, and, and they're using premier fencing and stuff. And I'm going, how is he not having um, problems with predators? Um, and, and he may not even bring it up since it's on his, on his YouTube. He may not tell people if he's losing um, poultry Perfect. that way. But um but he also go their kid. They got enough big enough family where they get up. <laughs> they can send a kid out in the fields at nine o'clock at night and go shut the gate. <laughs> and the and the chickens is like that ain't gonna happen in our place. So we needed automation. So, um, but yeah. So we got we got them handled. So that was kind of our big thing here. So, moving right along. Also, I'll bring up. We also have our second feral house built and done. And so all we're doing is putting some um, fencing around it, which is all laid out. We just um, uh, I ran out of stakes last uh, week, so we didn't finish the project. But uh, so now Zelda and Maggie can have their own areas and their own feral houses, and it'll be very nice. So finally got that project done. So so the reason I I um, want to bring it out is 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 the uh, title of the show was. Are we prepping for the summer? So um, I was kind of thinking, I'm going, you know, all of us, it seems like everybody I've been talking to from you guys is you're all kind of getting ready for your spring projects, like your chicken tractor, John. You mm -hmm. <laughs> imagine that's for your spring projects. Mm -hmm. I don't, Amy, what, what's some of the new projects you guys have going on? <clears throat> we built two new rabbit hutches. So each hutch has two cages so that's mm. four cages total new rabbit hutches real nice ones that um Dustin's uncle made for us and we have our next batch of rabbits you know i i think the last time i was on the show i was talking about how the rabbits weren't wanting to do their bunny business yeah. but um they've changed their mind i don't know if it's because winter's over or not but um so Debbie got a rabbit from us that, that is pregnant. And then we have a rabbit that will be due just the first part of April. So we'll have baby bunnies. We have more cages to put them in. Um, we're hatching chicks. I've got, I've got chicks. I don't know how many we've had, we're hatching chicks and, and the incubator is just, you know, as soon as they're out of the incubator, I put another batch in. We're talking about getting another incubator. Um, bigger well, ones. I'm just working so. overtime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and, so all, uh, all the baby everything. Anything uh, new with um, the, the uh, milk cow or anything? You guys got a new plan for that yet? Um, not so much. Uh, we had a sewer issue. Um, it was leaking somewhere. So the last week we've been working on that. Um we burned through our hay faster than we had planned on this year. So it was, it was a priority to get the sewer fixed, get some more hay. Both of those have been done. So I think we'll start talking about the cow barn again, but one of our cows has earned her ticket to freezer camp. Uh -oh. And it's not my milk cow. It's, it's the younger one that we thought might be a candidate for being a milk cow. We thought, well, maybe we'll breed this one. Absolutely not. I cannot wait for this cow to go to the butcher. She yells her head off all the time. She just yells. All the time. Doesn't matter if she's in heat, not in heat, fed, not fed. She just is so annoying. Yells all the time. I said, that's it. You're you're going to the butcher. This can't be soon enough, in my opinion. So, yep. She's the freezer like sacrifice. <laughs> So uh, are you um, still looking at getting one of your 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 milk cow bread this year? Yep. Um, good old Uncle Sam. I don't know if anybody else has done their taxes yet, but uh, and probably I'm the only one who has to deal with this. But it it used to be the child tax credit was nice. You looked forward to that. I'm like, I got three kids. Yeah, man, I'm yeah, gonna yeah. file my taxes. I'm gonna have a little extra spending money. Not. <laughs> good old 
good old FJB, he uh, gutted the um, child tax credit and like, cool, I can buy hay. And that's it. So I had all kinds of homestead plans to do with the, the tax refund, man, you know, but and and what so was one that? of the things like, what? FJB. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go Biden. <laughs> oh, do you not know that? Okay, well, I, this is a family friendly so, show, so you go look it up. But, uh, let's go, Brandon. Yeah. I know what you meant, Aim. <laughs> yeah, well, um, so, so yeah, Poopy we did want to, yeah, <laughs> that's family friendly right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want to, we do want to get the my good old meatloaf, my milk cow artificially inseminated. And that was one of the things on on the list for oh that's what we can do with the tax refund but and I'm sure we still will but um, yeah it was that's kind of a gut punch when we did our taxes I was like that's all <laughs> <laughs> so I gotta ask what's it cost to inseminate inseminate they say that right you uh, have a cow inseminate yeah yeah um anywhere from four to eight hundred dollars uh when oh you you get to pick which bull you would like yeah and so they um they send you a straw a literal straw of semen and yeah. so one of those ranges anywhere from and it depends on the bull you pick it ranges one straw ranges from anywhere from uh sixteen dollars to that's like the walmart special you know <laughs> Sixteen <laughs> to like eighteen hundred dollars well, from, from these the champion bulls. <laughs> wow! Dang. Yeah, that comes, you know, with a gold gold tube with a crystal encased. No, I don't know. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's kind of reasons but why we get the sparky. The service itself is anywhere from four hundred to eight hundred. Wow. wow! I know when we went, we were thinking about well. Wow, when we're going to breed pigs, we just, you know, take our pigs over and have it bred with uh, somebody's. And they want to charge like 500 a piece for all that. And that's yeah. uh, when we found that out right away, that, that brought on. That's why we have Sparky. <laughs> it's like, ah. Oh, yeah, you can buy a breeder on your own on that one. Yeah, but, you know, <laughs> and, and breeders, um, uh, what, you know, a lot of things they're concerned about is if you took, like you took your meatloaf over to another cow um, in another f farm or something, you never know that it could pick up uh, diseases and stuff like that. So a lot of breeders don't even like to give out their, their boars uh, for that purpose because um, they could exactly. damage their own herd. So, uh, it, um, so that makes sense to do that um, or get your own. And, but both of them have major cost involved. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, they guys, say you, when you bring exactly, a new animal, you, away, it you out. need to quarantine them. So why wouldn't you do that if you were going to go breed them somewhere? Yeah, but you're talking about sexual disease or something you could pass, uh, uh, stuff that you probably wouldn't normally deal with because um, it's uh, the fact that they're doing intercourse and stuff like that, that uh, it could be passed on to your, your animals' uh, diseases that probably wouldn't normally happen if they weren't breeding. So... Um, Anyway, it's just a lot of serious things out there, but um, and it's that's expensive. the whole real sucks, right? What's that? Say, say, say again. Yeah, that that's how that's why I got two more. That's why I have two more goats is because um, I got my own boy goat that does have his balls and can do the job and to have a closed herd. So I got the girls, I got the boys. Nobody's got to go anywhere, and I can make the babies here. Yep. So, Rev, you said you had a lot of projects going on for uh, spring. What's going on? Oh, man. Uh, well, we still got the turning the uh, horse arena into a garden. Um, but we're going to uh, just do like potatoes and maybe some corn out there. But we we decided we have a big room, um, like a family room in the in the middle of our house that I like to call a rumpus room just because I like that name. But uh we're going to turn that into a indoor hydroponic vegetable garden oh, cool. um, in the house. Nice. Um, we, did, we found out there's a hydroponic store um, close by 
and uh, um, that's our plan with that. Um, we went to uh, Harbor Freight's big parking lot sale last weekend. I don't know if you guys caught that, but my wife fun. bought me a welder um, last weekend. So I'm gonna I'm gonna learn to weld. I got that going on. Um, we got the uh, wild dog that I have, Shane here. Uh, he's gonna be training on the halo collar this weekend. I got a big weekend um, mm -hmm. it's because I don't want he. You know he's still young. He 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 doesn't go very far. But I don't really want him going anywhere. You know what I mean. I want him here, um, and and I don't want to chain him up either. You know what mm -hmm. I mean. So uh, I went ahead and bit the bullet and got one of them fancy halo collars for him um where i can do it on the, on an app you know yep. um so uh we got that going on uh we got chickens on order um, they're still not going to be here for a little while um but uh we got a, we got a lot going on right now we, i you know it's something that i think you guys will be kind of amused about uh last weekend last saturday i cut my grass and i knew oh. that you guys would hate that because it's warm enough to cut the grass but the next morning on Sunday, dang if it didn't snow for five minutes. And I was like, I was like, man, they're gonna like this on the podcast. I'll tell you that much because yeah. they just they just hate my weather. I'll tell you. But uh, other than that, it's been real nice uh, here. It was like sixty something today. Um, I had these things on that, that are kind of like pants, but they're not as long as pants. They come down to your, like knee and then they stop. Some people call them shorts. I was wearing those the other day, and uh, it, it's, it's been it's been super nice. It's been super nice. <laughs> we don't know what those are. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we forgot to play our new game. Where in the East Coast is Rev today? Yeah, where is everybody? Rev? Take where a guess real fast, Rob. What do you got? Alabama, uh, New Jersey. That's not the Southeast, Rob. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, what do you got, John? Alabama. Alabama. Uh, Georgia. Amy, take a guess. Where in the southeast is Rev? Uh, Kentucky. <laughs> Good guesses, everybody, except for Rob. Except for I'm I'm actually at home. I'm in North Carolina. I'm sitting in my driveway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I did. I tricked I you. A, I need a graphic for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Where in the East Coast is Rev? That's yeah, yeah. That's yeah. pretty good. All right. Yeah. I'll get on it. I'll get on it. Um, <laughs> you don't need any more graphics, buddy. You're good. Um, I have SpaceX Starlink. Uh, star, um, this note about Starlink was a 200 month satellite internet. I pay 110. I think it went up. I, I got it. I see you have it. You have a uh, Starlink too, don't you, uh, Amy? Yeah, I don't know what we pay, but yeah. Yeah, because it started out ninety nine, but it's up it's up to one ten. Yeah, they said it doesn't come over here. We're a mile and away I, from each of them. We can't yeah. get it, and I can't get it. I can't get a dish to me to pay for. You know, oh. it just. <laughs> 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 you can't afford internet. You got to pay for all those chickens. <laughs> I want to show you my turkey. Oh, neat. He's, <laughs> oh. He's getting so big. Wow. Hi. Cute. How old are it, yeah, you, you should hear these things chirp. The chickens <laughs> make one noise. This thing <laughs> makes a noise like tweet, 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 oh, tweet, 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 tweet. <laughs> <laughs> They're super quiet. <laughs> it's okay, baby. How how old are they now? Three weeks. Wow. Three weeks? Wow. It's getting big. Yeah. So John, what's some of your big projects? Uh Pearson, what do you got going on over uh, in Eugene? Well, I'm 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 prepping myself for my uh for my uh meat birds. Um uh, I think I'm in pretty good shape with that. I gotta get one. Oh, uh, you know, one of those horse trough, uh, six foot deals, like, like, you know, to put the chicks in to yeah. get them in three weeks. That's what uh, we got. Yeah. Um, make uh, sure you put netting over the top of it. Oh yeah. No, I am. These yeah. things for after the first week, these things started popping out of the top. <laughs> they blew the coop. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> That's when they went out. Yeah. They're sitting in the living room watching uh, YouTube. Yeah. And they, they were, they were a little over a month. And when the first one flew the coop, they went out to the coop. Oh. 
Yeah. Like I, uh, last week, you know, and, and, um, and everything, the chicks around here, um, are kind of like, you know, toilet paper and COVID. So, um, yeah. it's it, a little tough to get. So, uh, my big sacrifice for the homestead is I decided to take tomorrow off because that's when oh, the, there you go. That's when oh, the yeah, local feed store is going to chicks <laughs> out and I'm going to be first in line. I'm gonna, yep. <laughs> I'm going to get me my chicken, <laughs> my regular. I want to get another, you know, six to eight more uh, egg layers. And that's that's that. The pigs are going to be uh, done uh, middle of May. Um, middle of May, they're going to get processed. And, uh, you do know that people are going with their chairs and getting in line before the sun breaks. Yeah, I'm not going to say where I'm going to be, but... Because <laughs> it really is that tough lately. Uh, you know, it's yeah. funny. Here's here's the funny thing is that uh, so I went down to our local coastal farm store here uh, the other day. It's like oh, we get we get birds on Wednesday, so I went to check it out to see what they had. You know what they had? They had nothing but uh, Cornish cross. It, that no, everybody wants the eggs. You know what I mean? So they had mm -hmm. Cornish cross. And they were 50% off. Of course, I wasn't 100% ready. And I got my meat birds coming, so I wasn't going to take any of them. But they were letting them go for a buck fifty a piece. And uh, but yeah, so, but no, but everybody, everybody, and then then they had a bunch of bantams, which are cute and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, if I'm going to get an egg, I want an egg. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, that's a one store that's giving them away free. So. Uh, so. Oh yeah, Coastal's giving them away free with purchase of something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you buy two layers and they give you five them. five crosses. Yeah. Oh wow, yeah. See, that's what I mean. That's uh, they 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 kind of I don't think they estimated that properly because uh, everybody's wanting the everybody's wanting the egg birds. So tomorrow I'm all dialed in. I'm getting up early, you know, and. And uh, gonna go get my uh, gonna go get my egg layers. If not, I'm gonna drive down to uh, Medford and pick them up from the hatchery. So, well, Debbie's perfected the growing her own egg layers. Not. <laughs> I'm getting there. You guys popped any more any more eggs hatched or? Uh, uh, yeah, she had. Yeah, three. I just had three. Nice. And if it, it's a cross between the, my brown silky and the rocks, uh huh, they look like silkies. They have hairy feet. Hairy feet. <laughs> and then in my ink, other incubator, I have I still have the top what uh, top Polish. hats going, and they go in the next incubator in three days. Mm -hmm. So they'll oh. be hatching. By the, by the 23rd. Nice. And out of the six eggs, you think he, she has five. Wow. Four. Two of them don't have anything in them. Rob, do you have any eggs rolling? Nope. <laughs> Not right now? I've got plenty of chickens. I'm happy. <laughs> there you go. Amy, you, you, you said you have your incubators going, right? Yeah. Hi. Nice. Nice. Yeah, we we pretty much decided to rejuvenate our whole flock except for six. Nice. Well, that's cool. So, um, Amy and I have been having the same problem with our little babies. I had to I had to put one down. Oh yeah. Yeah, because last time Amy had one that the legs weren't working right. What is that called, Amy? Spraddle leg or splayed leg. Yeah. Well, mine had that. And then mine never opened his eyes. Mm -hmm. So I had to introduce him to the freezer. <laughs> yeah. I had a vet tell me a long time ago, the best way to put a bird down is take a plastic bag, put holes in it, and set them in the freezer. They get cold and go to sleep and don't wake up. And it only took 10 minutes and he was gone. Yeah. Yeah. We've always so, yeah. used the hatchet. And it, this one is the same one that was stuck in the egg for like a day and a half. 
So oh, I, yeah. I think that I had that in common too. And I'm not sure what about that happens at the end, but um, similar issue. And the one that I lost today uh, was also deformed. It was like Quasimodo. It was not right. But, but also again, it was having trouble hatching. So I, so I think when they're already not okay, they have trouble hatching. I don't think that they had a problem because they had trouble hatching. I think it's the other way around. They have trouble hatching because they're already not right. right. I agree. I totally agree. Yeah. It's sad, the last, but one, the last I group that I did, the one that was having problems, got his beak stuck. I tried to help that one, didn't make it. The next one that got his beak stuck, he came out all weirded out and he didn't make it either so it has something to do with the hatching process yeah i need to remind you guys um uh streamyard uh you might have noticed when you guys log on now uh there's a new feature on there that if you want to share the show with any of your social medias that you're involved in uh you can actually click a button right there and then point it to whatever you want it. Like if you wanted to put the live show on like uh, uh, Dragonfly Farms, you could instead of just posting the, 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 the thing now. So anyway, in the future, when you guys log on, that new feature should have showed up today. Um, but anyway, just cool. let you know this. That Did you just die? Lost you, Rob. <laughs> I'm waiting for him to move. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Hello. moving now. I'm moving. Um, StreamYard's got all kinds of new uh, features to it to try it out. So anyway, in the future, we'll probably be exercising some of the new little toys on, on StreamYard. So uh, see so what else we got going on before we close up. Um, got all of our shout outs and... Uh, uh, my two big things were for um, Mobile Chicken Tractor, got the new door and the new fur owls. And by the way, in Central Oregon, I don't know about if you guys agree, but today was actually a nice day. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. It was a sparkling day. A sparkling day in Central Oregon. Yes, it was. <laughs> I got um, hay moved and everything. Well, I didn't deserve, wear a coat. You deserve it. wasn't that nice. <laughs> yeah, I did not wear a coat. And I, uh, I'm not a coat person anyway. But I've been wearing a dang coat. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I just I go out there now, watch, uh, sit down for a little while. While waters are filling up or something, but now I got new entertainment out with the pigs. Is now I'll get surrounded by five chickens. <laughs> and, uh, they like people. Those chickens you gave us, they like people. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, it's really easy to feed them. They just steal a little food, pig feed, and they give it to them, and they, they like to munch on that. But they're eating all day, and they're finding all kinds of stuff in the two acres that we gave them. So, um, If they're Amazon now, what are they going to be? What's that? They're already Amazon chickens, so what are they going to be now that they get all this extra green stuff? I don't know. They should have. Uh, I still, um, every once in a while, out of the five, I'll get one egg or two. Um, one egg a day. I don't know which one's doing it, but uh, um, but they ought to be really good eggs because they're going to be, um, uh, we call it field, uh, um, Protein free game. ranging. So yeah, they'll start. Have... They'll play start up again because when I moved them from the old coop to the new one, they stopped too. Hmm. Only I, I only was getting one egg. But yeah, other than that, they're uh, they're doing great. They seem to be very happy. Uh, with the new good. freedom they got. So everything's going good. So I appreciate it. As long as they're not picking on my other chickens, I'm good. One minute. Oh, one minute. Yep. And uh, I think uh, we're going to bring a rooster to terrorize them too over from Amy. So we're, I can get over there and take care of that. And nice. One of these days, still, um, uh, permaculture is begun in the backfield. So I'm pretty happy about that. So. But anyway, guys, we are running out of time, and I want to thank the panel, and I don't know what Rob's doing. <laughs> he's probably jumping back right, on just to He's say trying to what? find his Lone Ranger hat. Uh, <laughs> I was looking for he's my like, sidekick. Yeah, you need your white horse. You're ready to get going there. Yeah. So anyway, guys, I want to thank everybody for uh, coming over. Um, I do have a special thing uh, coming up on the homestead. 
in about three weeks as a new uh, member of our family. And, uh, and it will be full of cuteness. And that's all I'll tell everybody. Um, the panel kind of already knows. But um, eventually we're going to have uh, something very cute uh, cute there. So, And uh, and I'm also trying out a new groomer in the ranch. And so I'll be doing a video on that this coming Monday. So anyway, guys, have a great evening. Thank, uh, thank uh, all the uh, hosts tonight. And uh, it was a great show. Hey, yeah, Rabbit, your part. Yep. So, see you later, guys. Yeah, what to do? Mm -hmm. Graphics. <laughs> this video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available in Amazon right now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.